Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create this chart which is based on a donut chart but it's going to look a little bit different. So the number of dots is going to increase or decrease according to what we're showing on the chart. This is an awesome little chart to put on your dashboard. Now thank you to the YouTuber Buddy at Work who first showed me the basics of doing this. I've included a link to his original video in the description below. The problem with his video is there is no audio and also I think we can make this a little bit more efficiently. So let's go and see how we're going to do it. And to do this, we're swinging back into Excel. So I'm going to start here in Excel. I've already got my data. So I've just got two elements here with percentages. So the percentages need to add up to 100 because this is based on a donut chart. I'm going to give you access to this file in the description below because what I've done is I've actually used a spin button here so that we can change these numbers really quickly. And you may want to see how the spin button works. Just right click it and choose format control. You can see how it works. It's actually pushing its data over here. And then we're using that value dividing it by 100 here just to show it as percentages. But this is a nice little starting point. So to create our chart, we're going to start with our background element. So I'm going to the insert, I'm going to shapes, and I'm just going to put this on a rounded rectangle. So I'm going to drag out my rounded rectangle at this point. You're going to do yourself a favor if you go to shape fill here and then choose one of these fills so that you know what color you're working with. I'm going to use this one. So it's blue accent one dark at 25%. Just remember that. Now you can put a border on this or not as you please. So the next thing is to do our circle of dots. So again, go going to the insert tab, we're going to shapes, we're going to the ellipse tool. I'm just going to drag it out over here, holding the shift key as I do so that it is a perfect circle. Now we need to format this. So we're going up here to shape format. If it doesn't appear, just click on it. The fill is going to be nothing at all. So I'm going to no fill. The outline is going to be a sort of green. I'll probably use this really light green. Actually, let's just make it a bit darker so that you can see it right now. I'm also going back to outline, shape outline. I'm just going to more lines because I need access to all this stuff over here. Just makes it easier to show all the elements that you can change so that you can change them all at once. So I'm just increasing the width of this line. Doesn't really matter what you increase it to, just make it so that you can see it. We're going down to dash type. We're going to take this first option and then we're going to cap type and we're going to select round. And so basically that just gives us dots. So let's again hold the shift key, size this down a little bit and let's move it over into our chart area. So basically at this stage, you can just work out how big you want your dotted chart to be and make sure that the background fits. So we're layering these things. This rectangle's at the bottom and the circle is above it. The only thing to watch out here is that as you increase or decrease the width, you may find, and I can see it here, these dots here are getting really close together and they're not the same as everything else. So you want to just choose some combination of width that is going to give you dots that look like they're spread evenly around the circle. Just a heads up there if you like. So now we're going to do the donut chart bit and that involves our data. So I'm just going to grab my data here. I'm going to insert. I'm going to pie and donut charts. I'm going to donut chart. And I just want a plain old donut chart. Now, if you look at this, you'll see that my donut chart has a background. It's also got colors and it's got titles and things. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the title and we're going to get rid of the legend. We don't want those. We're also going to get rid of this background because we want to put it over the top because the idea about this is that we're going to use these elements to block out the dots underneath. And so we need to be able to see through this chart because we're building it up layer by layer so we don't have to relayer it later on if you like. So let's go up to format because I've got my chart selected. I'm going to shape fill. And I'm just going to choose no fill. You can see it's also got an outline. So we're going to get rid of that at the same time. Again, format, shape outline, no outline. Now, as you're dragging, you want to avoid doing what I just did and pulling just a element from the chart and breaking it up. So I'm just going to press Control or Command Z to or Z to undo that and see if I can focus on what I'm doing and get the chart to move, not just individual pieces. So at this stage, again, holding the Shift key, I just want to enlarge this. 
and I want to make sure that it's going to place pretty much over my circle. Now I can finesse that in just a minute, but for now we need to format the donut chart so it's showing us the bits that we want to see. So I'm going to look at my data over here and I'm going to have a look at this one thing. So I need to work out what I want my chart to show. So it can show one thing or other things. So it can show either of these. And I just need to be clear about which one. So for me, it's going to be one thing. I want this chart to show 40%. So 40% is this piece over here. So if I want to see it, I want this to be transparent. So this blue area here needs to be transparent so I can see the dots underneath. So I'm going to click on my chart and I'm going to access just this element here. And over here in format data point, make sure it says format data point, not series. You're going to go to the border. I don't want any line around that and it's fill is going to be no fill. And at this point, you should see the dots. The only difficulty is that you're also saying this big orange bit, but we can easily solve that by making this orange bit the exact same color as underneath and removing the outline. So we're going to click on this and click on this again so that we have again format data point. So the fill here is going to be that color we used for the background and this is where it helps to know what color you actually used. So this is going to come here and this is blue accent one dark at 25. So I know that this is a match for what's underneath. And the border, well just no line for border. And when I click away, you'll say that we now have this series of dots. And because I added this spin button, we can see very clearly that this is going to show our data. So as I increase or decrease the value for one thing, we're seeing more or less of dots on the screen. Of course, at this point, we need to have some sort of a legend. So let's see how we're going to do our legend. What I'm going to do is click in here. I'm going to stick these two words together so I can just add a text box with one piece of text. I'm going to use what's called concatenate here. So I'm going to type equal and then concatenate. C-O-N, C-A-T, and then you can start saying it's going to appear here, so I'm just going to double click on it. So concatenate allows me to join things together. So I'm going to click on one thing, and then I'm going to put in a comma, a set of quote marks, a space, and another quote mark. So that means it's going to read one thing and then a space, a comma. This 55% is actually point. Five, five. So it's not going to be really nice to look at in terms of numbers, but I'm going to take the value in that cell, but I'm going to multiply it by 100 because that's going to make it read 55. I'm going to add a comma, and then I'm going to add another set of quote marks with my percentage sign, close my quote marks, close my bracket, and just press enter. And what we should have is something like this, one thing, 55%. And I can just copy this down to the cell below, and it's going to say other thing, 45%. And so if these values change, then you can say that the concatenate function is giving us a single piece of text that is representing exactly what's in these two columns. Just a nice handy way of solving the next problem, which is to insert a small text box. So I'm going to the insert tab, go to text box. I'm just going to drag a text box in here. And I want to put in this text box, this thing here. So I'm going to type an equal sign and I'm just going to click on one thing because that's what my chart is showing. That's what I determined my chart was to show. I'm going to press enter. So let's go back here. Let's go and start increasing the font to something nice and big. We'll center it in the text box. We'll change its color to whatever we want. I'm thinking a lighter green, even though we can't see it right now, but we know what to do with that. The text box has got a fill, so we're going to click on it, go to shape format, turn the fill to no fill. It's also got a border I can see there. So we're going to shape outline, no outline. So now my chart has a sort of legend and the legend is going to be updated if the data updates. So this is all very dynamic. And if you save this as a template, then you could come in here at any time and just change the data here. So I'm going to change this to attendance. And apart from the fact that I've got a slight sizing issue here, the chart is going to show our attendance percentage and it's going to show this increasing or decreasing. 
So these charts are really easy to do if you set about the right way and just layer them. Build your background, then build your dots, and then build something over the top that's going to block out the bits that you don't want to see and show the things that you do want to see. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned things about Excel that you didn't know before. If you did, please subscribe to the channel and tell me what you liked about this video in the comments below because I'm really looking forward to hearing from you. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.